Ladies and gentlemen, they demand William Barr testify, and not only testify, they're, they're demanding, the Democratic Party is now demanding, with Congressman Jerry Nadler, they're demanding that he speak with committee counsel. Now, committee counsel is essentially the legal staff of the Democratic Party committees, or the Democratic Party uh, congressional committee that's going to question William Barr on his horrendous decision to state the obvious, to make a factual statement that there was no evidence of Russia collusion, uh, Trump-Russia collusion. Trump did not collude with Russia. So that's actually the Mueller team of Democrats who gave over $50,000 to Clinton, President Obama, and the Democratic National Committee. The evidence they used, of course, was a steel dossier purchased by Clinton, literally purchased by funneling money through her law firm. A steel dossier compiled with Russian sources. So guess who colluded? Then you have a, steel, a CrowdStrike uh, company, a third-party tech firm that was outsourced by Democrats. Two years, 30-plus indictments that actually have nothing to do with collusion. Why? Uh, because they were just trying to make people afraid. They were trying to torment people into flipping and singing, which is what Comey, McCabe, and Strzok will do. And I explained that in my Federalist article below. They w they're the ones and others who will be charged under the legal statute, the 18, the U.S. Code 371 statute. They're the ones who are going to be charged under that because they conspired to defraud the United States government, utilizing government agencies for purely political and, uh, and criminal endeavors, framing and setting up Trump under the absurd notion that he worked with Russia to purchase Facebook ads or hack the DNC is so ridiculous that only Democrats could conjure them up at the behest of Hillary. All of it stems back to Clinton, directly to Clinton. But anyway, here you have legal information. Okay, Cornell School, each industry committee will be furnished um, a lawyer uh, to serve as committee counsels and, and then, okay, so committee counsels shall, shall advise the committee on the issues of law, including interpretations of these regulations and the legal scope of the committee's discretion, which arise from the committee proceedings. The committee counsel shall be advised to assist the committee uh, at all of its meetings. Okay, so look, what they're trying to do is have William Barr speak to a bunch of either lawyers or legal experts associated with the Democratic Party. And so the House Judiciary Committee is not only, not only demanding that William Barr repeat himself, they're going to question why he came up he came to the conclusion there was no obstruction. Now, obstruction is not very difficult. There, there was no obstruction because, number one, the probe was unlawful. Number two, um, there was no evidence of a crime to begin with. They weren't an, even investigating the existence of a crime. This is the only probe. This is one of the only probes in history, in the history of law, where there wasn't a predicate crime. There wasn't even, look, like, the alleged break-in, because we have no clue. The ODNI and DHS reports do not list. They state warranty disclaimers. The Department of Homeland Security and the Director of National Intelligence, James Clapper, came out with two reports prior to James Clapper's interview with Chuck Todd, where he said, there's no evidence of Trump-Russia collusion. We have no evidence. Okay, they already knew, and I explained in my latest Federalist article, James Clapper already knew there was no evidence of Trump-Russia collusion. He already knew that. The, 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 the intelligence reports, two of them, come with warranty disclaimers I explain in my Federalist article, which is below in the pinned comment. Share that everywhere. They literally state, the United States government actually states within these intelligence reports, which is why John Brennan, and I quote him in the Federalist article, says, I don't do intelligence, I do, I don't do evidence, I do intelligence. Literally states, these are 
judgments. These judgments could be wrong. Judgments are not meant to assume that we, that we have evidence of fact. There are no warranties. There are no guarantees in this report. So they've covered their you-know-what from a legal sense. Now, media, just because media runs with it and the Democratic Party runs with it, doesn't make it true. The United States government never looked at DNC servers. They have no guarantee that, that Russia hacked the servers. When Mueller indicted Russian intelligence officers for allegedly hacking into the DNC, the indictment shows Company One. Company One is CrowdStrike. CrowdStrike was outsourced by the Democratic Party. Why would you, why would you allow a defense attorney to give the DA all the evidence that makes no sense at all. But what they want to do is they want to just hound and ask a whole bunch of theoretical questions because there is no collusion. There was no crime. So William Barr is saying, I'm not going to go testify. I will not testify um, under this format. I don't mind speaking to Congress. I don't mind speaking to people who are elected officials in the House Judiciary Committee. You want to ask me a million dumb questions regarding why I didn't um, indict Trump on obstruction when he didn't obstruct any aspect of this two-year probe into nothing that was started by James Comey illegally sharing classified memos. So he's willing to he's willing to discuss these issues with them what he's not willing to do is subject himself to endless nonsense william barr is not going to subject himself to questions from jerry nadler and um and house republicans aoc i don't know if aoc would be on there but house uh, house i'm sorry house democrats on legal theory pertaining to obstruction of justice you're talking about the most petulant people. And they're going to, essentially, what they're going to try to do is they'll, in their own charming way, try to get him in, not a perjury trap, but they'll try to say, well, wait a second. If, theoretically, um, obstruction of justice is any, um, any action that prevents or impedes the um, inv an investigation... And Trump tweeted that Manafort was doing a good job by not disclosing information. Therefore, he impeded the investigation because we were just about to find out that Manafort was communicating directly with Putin at the behest of Trump to purchase Facebook ads which swung Wisconsin. That's what they're going to, like, their lives revolve around that. So, this, this is Jerry Nadler. Check this out. This is hilarious. This is hilarious. This is Jerry Nadler and, and how, and, and his demands of Barr. So check this out. The president said he's directed witnesses not to appear um, and to oppose uh, uh, subpoenas. And obviously that's obstructing oversight and is trying to make the presidency a monarchy uh, to, to get rid of congressional accountability. They're he's trying to make the presidency a monarchy. <laughs> Nobody believes this. Nobody believes this. Okay? When, when President Obama said, oh, I, I learned when everyone else did that, uh, that Hillary had her servers, was he making the presidency a monarchy? Um, what about when he unilaterally sent Americans abroad? Um, was that utilizing the AUMF? Well, did Bush and then Obama... Uh, enable the the presidency to become a monarchy so it's like there's it, it's hilarious any and and trump has every right to disregard any request demand request subpoena anything from congress regarding his taxes regarding any further discussion of the Mueller probe with a, regarding any further witnesses on the Mueller probe, because the Mueller probe was illegal to begin with. It should never have been started. It was an overt setup. They framed it. It's obvious. The facts show they tried to oust the president. From Rod Rosenstein trying to use the 25th Amendment, and he, he saved his you-know-what by being there, because he started the whole thing. 
And then now he's going, and now he's uh, saying, oh, you know, President Obama didn't do anything against uh, Russian aggression during the election. Like, they think Facebook ads is aggression. They, they lost for so many reasons. In 2015, I said they would lose the election in the Hill, the Huffington Post, and Salon. Everyone thought, oh, clickbait. Oh, horrible. Oh, I was right. I was 100% right. Clinton would lose to Trump. But... And then back then, you had Nate Silver saying Trump wouldn't even become GOP nominee. I was saying that Trump would lose to Clinton. I mean, Trump, uh, Clinton would lose to Trump. But you have a situation where a FISA warrant to, to, to surveil for surveillance of American citizens, Carter, Page, and others, these warrants were obtained because judges were deceived. That's illegal. James Comey leaked classified memos. That's illegal. Peter Strzok literally stated, we, we will stop Trump. That's illegal. You can't have FBI agents saying, we're going to stop this person and then investigate that person. You just can't have these things take place. There was nothing like one uh, pundit on the left on a major channel, you know, she was like, Nothing illegal took place. Like they've convinced themselves that this was actually the U.S. government. It wasn't an extension of the Democratic Party or the Obama administration or Hillary Clinton, mainly Clinton. They've convinced themselves that because suspicion, because the United States government was suspicious and suspected that Trump was working with Russia, and that the United States government was just fine somehow with the sale of 20% of U.S. uranium capacity to Putin. That was okay. Bill Clinton meeting with Putin, that's okay. Literally meeting, literally meeting with Putin at his home. Money flowing into the Clinton Foundation, beneficial treatment taking place for Uranium One, countries for weapons deals. Um... 85 donors giving $156 million, then meeting with Clinton, UBS, Boeing, all of these, the litany of pay, l l overt pay-to-play, like people gave money into the Clinton Foundation, and then they got beneficial treatment, but you can't connect any dots. But a Manafort's ostrich feather jacket and Trump winning the election, theres you have to connect those dots, don't you know? So... This is why 77% of Americans, I believe that's the figure, distrust media. This is why they have zero chance, and Clinton will eventually run. There's already an article today on, Bite, on, uh, on Democrats and how they're freaking out about their chances in 2020. Was it that Wall Street Democrats are freaking out? They know what's going on. They know what's going on. You think they're going to roll with... Um, Biden? Biden is an old man. Bernie is an old man and they cheated him. Nobody else even comes cl even breaks 10% in terms of polling within the Democratic Party. Or yeah, the Democratic primaries. She just look. Trump entered the race in June of 2015. It's only the beginning of May. We're we're approaching May. It's not even May yet. It's April 29th. We're approaching the beginning of May. She enters June, July, or August. Democrats will actually be relieved. Most of humanity will be petrified. I will be taking a, a victory lap saying, I told everyone, I told the whole planet that Clinton is running because she is. And we will all be taking a victory lap when President Trump wins in 2020 because the Democratic Party has thrust this country into a new Cold War simply because they lost the election with Red Scare McCarthy era hysteria. And they, are, they preach all the time. They're the biggest hypocrites on the planet on every issue, on every single issue. They spent two years there was no collusion now they want to get Trump on obstruction and now they just want to grill William Barr but they don't like him because he's actually didn't recuse himself from humanity like, like Sessions did 
Sessions was an abomination. He was the worst. He was the worst. Every single chance Trump has to clown Sessions, every chance he gets, he clowns him. And everyone else does too. Like, he was horrendous. Absolutely horrendous. And he not only had his deputy attorney general start the Mueller probe, because Rod Rosenstein started the Mueller probe, but he did nothing to curtail. In fact, one of the one of the allegations in terms of obstruction is Jeff. He told Jeff Sessions to what? Did he, what was it? No, not not. Uh, I forget exactly what I said. Sessions didn't even do it. <laughs> so, it's it's just. What they're doing is they're being petulant right now. They're being petulant. And I explain exactly. I explain exactly. Oh, and then he says, Nadler says, oh, um, William Barr is afraid to testify. What is he hiding? Like, it's so overt. They are scratching and clawing and they have no shame. Meanwhile, Republicans are kind of getting on board. But they're like, gosh, you know, we're going to find the origins of this. Now, a lot are saying that it's, a, it's just an overt trying to, like, oust the president. A lot, are say, a, lot of people, a lot of Republicans are saying that. But most Republicans are like, oh, well, you know what? Let's find the origin. Let's be, that's the beginning of this. William Barr is the man. He's talking about, yeah, yes, they did spy. We have to find out how this all started. But everything is, like, kind of diplomatic to just, to just not – because you don't want them to, like, melt, have, a, have one of their usual meltdowns. With, with the Democrats, it's like, what's he hiding? He's hiding something. He's hiding something. And then you have Bill Maher. So there's like no, no level of respect. Like they're like completely like descended into the gutter. He's hiding something. He's, he's obstructing our oversight. We need his taxes also, by the way. And it's like, why, why, for what, what purpose? Just because you want to make everything morally relative with Clinton, who is an actual criminal, who actually committed crimes, who, who many mainstream Democrats and liberal pundits on the left, big YouTube channels, they can't, they can't admit. They cannot say there are people. Look, there's a code of ethic. There's, a, there's an ethical code on the left. You can critique Clinton. You can say, gosh, she's not that great. But you cannot call her a criminal because she's an actual criminal. Trump is not. He didn't commit crimes. But you can call Trump a criminal. But you cannot call Clinton a criminal. You cannot say that. You, can, you cannot say those things. And if you do, you're like excommunicated from the left. You're like seen as like, oh my God, a Trump, a Trump supporter. So before I, before I was, before I became, you know, public over Trump 2020, because I'm a Trump supporter, I'm voting for Trump in 2020. The guy is a fantastic president. The liberal progressive meltdown is not indicative of the reality of Trump's presidency. Record low black and Latino unemployment, but it started under Obama. Yeah, it reached a record high under Obama. It reached a record high, not seen since the Reagan administration, and then it went down. But in 2016, the GDP and the economy was like 1.6%. It was lackluster. How on earth do you know it would continue to have gone down to record lows? The beginning of peace between North and South Korea is a bigger foreign policy achievement than anything that took place in President Obama's tenure, and also President Obama and Clinton and Biden, the wonderful Botox Biden, Mr. High Energy, makes Jeb Bush look like a, uh, you know, one of those uh, race car drivers or like, you know, I don't know, like a um, BMX star. I, I, you know what I'm getting at? He makes Jeb Bush look high energy. Where was I? <laughs> anyway, anyway, oh my God. I like lost track of it. Anyway, the point is this. <laughs> the point is, this is all a farce. This is all like when when you compare Trump to the Obama administration, we have 300,000 uh, manufacturing jobs lost under President Obama, 500,000 created under Trump. You have a GDP and an economy. We have more people, 
more job openings than people to fill them. There are economic zones now for inner city communities that Trump signed an executive order on. He signed prison reform legislation. There are a lot of great things that he's done, okay? What he represents is not, you know, the rise of this or, oh, my God, it's he represents a loss of political power and influence. And that's why they, they've gone after him. And they set him up and they framed him. Everything was illegal. From purchasing a steel, it, it, it was illegal to even utilize a steel dossier when you knew it was unverified. They would never have allowed the same thing with Clinton. They would never have allowed the same thing. Comey leaked memos, that was illegal. They deceived FISA judges, that was illegal. Peter Strzok literally stated, oh, we have an insurance policy, we're going to um, you know, stop Trump. That's illegal as well. There are a whole bunch of things that were criminal acts. And Barr's gonna get to the bottom of this and it's gonna be very interesting. Ladies and gentlemen, give me your thoughts. Share this segment everywhere. It is going down. They're, now they're like, oh, yeah, we're going to issue a subpoena, da, 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 all this stuff. Like, Go ahead. Make make my day. William Barr's like, make my day. And they're, so they're going to lose at that also. Give me your thoughts. Hit subscribe. Share this segment everywhere. Get Let's get, let's get, to, let's get this channel to 150,000 subs. We're on our way there. And uh, my Patreon is below in the pinned comment below my Federalist articles if you want to support my voice. Your support is greatly, greatly appreciated. Thank you.